Hey, what's up? What's happening? Welcome to Ask the Maats. I'm one half of the dynamic duo that is uh, the Maats, me and my husband. But I am flying solo today and I wanted to do this video really quickly <laughs> while my son is taking a nap uh, because we got a flood of um, emails in after a video that we recently did. And, I, and it made me pause and think, hmm, you know, isn't this interesting, um, the kind of response that we got to this video. So if you haven't seen uh, the video I'm referencing, it's called, uh, Are You Woman Enough to Love a Broken Man? And uh, we did that video recently. Um, I'll put the link below so that you can uh, see that video if you're on YouTube. Um, otherwise, you need to go to YouTube to see that video. But here's the thing. We got all these emails uh, from women um, sharing their situations, sharing their scenarios, how long they've been with their broken man, um, uh, how how much they've sacrificed for their broken man. Um, they they just really, I mean, it's amazing to me how much time and energy people put into the letters you, you guys put into the letters that you send detailing out all of the stuff that you've been through. And I think probably because on some level it's therapeutic and you can kind of get that stuff out in perhaps a way that you haven't yet done. Uh, but the bottom line is that many of you wanted to know, is it okay? Is it okay that I'm doing this? You wanted permission. Uh, you wanted permission to be okay with being in a situation that in your gut and in your heart you felt perhaps you should not be in. You wanted an okay for leaving a situation that you haven't yet found the courage to leave or to demand better of. And, um, and so I, I just thought that was interesting. So I wanted to speak to something today in terms of this whole thing around uh, loving a broken man. Um, we can talk about the other way around loving a broken woman, but that video was about loving a broken man. And there's a whole lot of y'all, uh, out there in that category. Um, and you know, let me just point out that in that video, what I talked about, what my husband and I talked about is the fact that all people have broken spaces in them, that there is no one who escapes that. So it's not like, you know, y'all are all in that category and I'm not, my husband is broken in his own ways and in his own places. Um, as so am I, but at the same time, um, there has to be some sense of balance, some sense of awareness and discernment that you use as you try to figure out. So is this all good then? Because we can't honor all brokenness by being present for it. We can't we can't show up and just be uh, permissive about it and say, "Hey, this is all good. We we gonna hang out while you do you." That's that's not what we're talking about. Um, it is an honor to love a broken man. That was the thing that stood out for people. It's an honor. It's an honor for me to be present to see um, the the secret places. Um, that my husband has, the spaces that he discovers about himself that no one else knows, not his mommy, not his daddy, not his siblings, not his friends, but his wife. It is an honor um, as I've discovered those things about him and he's discovered things about me. So, so yes, it's an honor, but you can also go to this other place and you know if you are this person where you are doing something called codependent behavior. You know, codependence, y'all have probably heard that word, but I have to lift that up a lot because a lot of times um, we don't really recognize it in ourselves. Codependence is really about uh, enabling uh, or giving permission to or supporting in some way the immature behavior, the irresponsible behavior, um, the, the unhealthy behavior um, or mental health or situation of someone that we uh, love or that we're in relationship with. Okay, so again, you are supporting it, you are enabling it, you are rationalizing it, um, and the it is usually irresponsible stuff. It is it, it is it is immature stuff. It is stuff that does not meet your needs. So so you're so focused on them and all of the stuff that they're showing up and doing, and and in terms of their own uh, brokenness and how that's showing up in y'all's life, that you don't make room to to sit down and say, well, what about me? And so what I want to say to you is that you have to make sure that you take care of yourself. You are not fit to take care of anybody else. If you don't take care of yourself, if you don't have some non-negotiable standards for yourself, we talk about that all the time. If you don't even know what I'm talking about, if you can't even, you know, off the cuff say, Oh, my top three non-negotiables are, if you don't know what that is, then you know, you might be a little codependent. You might be at risk. And so what I would say to you is don't get siced off this, uh, what does it mean? And are you woman enough to love a broken man? Don't high five off that because somehow you feel you've been released from the guilt you felt because you know you're not taking care of yourself. That 
is for people who are balanced. That is for persons who are attempting to make sure that they are being balanced in terms of taking care of themselves and also giving grace to the one who they're in relationship with. But if you are not getting your needs met, if you in a raggedy old relationship where he ain't coming in, he ain't been coming in, you don't know what he's doing, he ain't bringing no money in, he ain't trying to bring it in, he ain't got no insight, don't want no insight, ain't been doing right, ain't gonna do right, and you already know this because you've been with this man not one, not two, not three years, but five or ten. Or perhaps it's only been two or three months and you think it's gonna change, but you already know if you just get still and Pay attention to your intuition that this is the way this brother rolls. If that is you, that is called codependence. That is called putting yourself second. That is called deferring your heart and mind to the, the heart and mind of someone else who does not deserve it. So today, if you have taken nothing else from my message to you today, I want you to make sure you take away this. Love yourself. It's that simple because it all begins and ends with love. Self-love is the best love, the best kind of love right up under God's love. And when you are doing that and you are being honest about it, then you won't get confused and say, oh, let me write up all this stuff that I'm, I'm doing and that I've got going on in my relationship and see what she says. You know, I do have a broken man, but, you know, is, is that all good? Is, is that okay? You think that works because, you know, he... He did, you know, uh, have a hard childhood and he was in foster care and he was left on somebody's step and he did get locked up and then his aunt, his uh, uncle left him and then, you know, oh, you know, he was on crack and then he got off and then he's, you know, at least he's, he's here, he's alive. He's, that's good. That may be good, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that it's good enough for you. Raise your standards, stand in your intuition, make sure that you take care of yourself. Self-love is the best love. Stop playing and start pushing.